Join me today as we talk a little bit about religion in Battletech. This is the Geek Cabal channel. My name's Bobby, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, one of the interesting aspects of Battletech, and that is the fact that religion is alive and well in the Battletech universe. <clears throat> now, why is that significant? Uh, well, if you look at a lot of sci-fi franchises, there's either like a made-up for that setting religion, like in Star Wars you have the Force, and uh, or like in Star Trek, they're, they come across as having a more atheist bent to them. While there are religions in Star Trek, the people of the Federation come across as largely atheistic. Uh, however, if you watch like Deep Space Nine, religion is a very prominent theme throughout the whole show. Uh, so, Battletech, uh, since Battletech is meant to be the future of humans from Earth, uh, unlike, say, Star Wars, which is another galaxy, and technically the past. So, uh, since it's that, they do address the fact that human religions continued on out into space. And uh, I think every dominant religion on Earth at the moment, uh, or I should say every prominent religion on Earth at the moment, is mentioned at least somewhere. Because uh, looking into this, uh, there's a part of this I already knew, but you know, I wanted to look into it a little bit to kind of you know, make sure I'm accurate on some things. Uh, I did actually find some references to Zoroastrianism actually still being practiced. Uh, I believe it's in the Magistracy of Canopus. Uh, that's not to say that's a major religion there, just that it's notable that it is practiced there. So, um, so how is it handled? Well, most of the Inner Sphere and the clans don't really care. Like, it's not a... most In most regions, it's not a state religion. They don't care what you practice as long as you pay your taxes, fight the wars, whatever. Uh, notably, House Lao is the one that seems to be the most relaxed about everything. Uh, some notable members of House Lao have even had uh, Hindu leanings, with uh, some of them being members of uh, the, the Kali cult, the, the Thuggy. And uh, which, yes, despite some of the things that Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was very culturally insensitive about, uh, the Thuggy cult is a real thing, or at least was. I uh, can't, can't tell you if they practiced tearing people's hearts out of their chest before they threw them into lava or not, but they were a thing. So, um, it's really, it's really only a few areas where it kind of, where it, it can kind of matter. House Kirita has a state religion, and it's Shintoism. And there's, a, they make a few exceptions, some of their planets are majority Muslim, and they allow Islam to be practiced. Um, apparently, the Rassel Hag Dominion was allowed to continue practicing uh, some form of Christianity uh, before they broke away and then eventually got absorbed into uh, the Rassel Hag Dominion. I think I misspoke there a second ago. Um, so, under that law, so under that, uh, there's even one of the books I have that talks about the houses, the one for House Kirita. Even has a subsection referencing Judaism because there are a number of people of Jewish descent in house in uh, the Draconis Combine, and so it explains that no, it's not illegal for them to simply exist because Judaism is both an ethnicity and a religion. Uh, they just can't practice Judaism, so they can be Jewish. They just can't practice the religion, and. Uh, that's that's in contrast to most of the others. They're they're the only one that really has like that state enforced religion, which led them to whenever they captured New Avalon to execute the Space Pope. Now the Space Pope has a whole backstory to him. That's part of the reason I want to make the video here. 
uh, whenever Stefan Amaris uh, overthrew House Cameron, they uh, there was some they went after the folks in the Vatican, and the Vatican sent a message out to everyone else saying, "Hey, you have to take local control because we're about to go dark because things are going to get dark, and uh, when things." come back on, you know, we'll, we'll realign. Well, the uh, people on New Avalon either got a garbled message or something and assumed that they meant for them to take control, so they elected a new pope, and by the time uh, they realigned, tried to realign with the one on Earth, like, they had diverged too much and essentially became their own, became a separate church. So, most of the Catholics in the Inner Sphere outside of House Davian space pay attention to the Pope on Earth in Rome, whereas the ones in House Davian Space talk to the one on New Avalon, who I refer to as the Space Pope, because he's in space. Now, whenever House Curita captured New Avalon, they executed the Space Pope, and I think some of the College of Cardinals and probably some others, which led to some of the remaining folks in the remaining chunks of uh, the Federated Sons that were not under control of House Kirita to elect a new pope, the warrior pope. And so there's even a, a fan-made song about this guy. And he uh, he's a mech warrior, and I think he drives a regent, if I remember right. And essentially, he's, he's the battle pope. You know, he's like some of the popes of old, like he's leading the troops into battle. And against, uh, has, they put it, the godless Kiritans. Um, so, there's a, there's a whole backstory to this guy, too, like a real-world backstory. Whenever Catalyst ran the uh, Clan Invasion Kickstarter, one of the things you could have if you, if you bought up to a certain tier, and it's a far lower tier than it should have been, uh, you were able to make a new character, you know, you, you could, uh, depending on how much you spent, you know, you could have like a portrait or it was just like a blurb, you know, might be used in a book here or there somewhere. Um, and they ended up getting like 5,000 some odd entries. Uh, as far as I'm aware, they haven't made my two entries yet, but, um, and that's part of a little side note. That's one of the only things that I'm kind of critical on them for. Like there really should have been like an index they created and maintained so that people would know where their characters wound up or if they were used, you know? Because, like, for all I know, my character's on, like, the back of a trading card somewhere, you know? I may never know. So, um, but they they have said they've got a, a group, an outside group, that's supposed to be trying to, to get everything together to figure out all the names that have been used and try to try to realign things. So they they are making efforts to to fix it, and I you know applaud them for that. It's one of the reasons why I think Catalyst is an okay company. I should say a decent company. Um, shouldn't say just okay. Most companies are just okay, but uh, you know they're they're a small company, but they do uh, they. Uh, I wish they were just a slight bit bigger so they had better communication. That's my only real complaint about them as a company. But they've been doing a lot to like get older books back into print on demand, and um, they've been pumping out new fiction like there's no tomorrow. And uh, the plastic units are great, you know, cheaper than the iron and metal versions. And uh, I think that they do listen to customers, and uh, they're very, very open and forthright at conventions when you talk to them. So, yeah, I think they're definitely on the better end of, of companies. So, because they don't have to do any of that, but they do. And they come up with fun, weird products, like the plushies, like like the cookbook that was in the last Kickstarter, uh, things like that. Uh, but anyway, so one person created a character for the Warrior Pope, you know, with the backstory and everything, and it has been embraced and it's been found its way into source books, and like it's definitely like a big rallying cry. Like people online are getting a real kick out of the fact there's a character like that. And like I said, there's even a, uh, a song uh, a group came up with, and if I, if I remember, I'll link it down in the description. It's, uh, I think it's just called The Warrior Pope of New Avalon. But you have things like that. Now, you also have, like, Comstar, where 
like the Word of Blake faction within it in particular took on a religious like zeal and worship of Jerome Blake, the one who founded Comstar. And uh, like I said, it was a near like it was a quasi religious thing. And a lot of what they were doing as far as like they would they began to incorporate chants and things like this into how they operated their technology. And it's to disguise what you're actually doing so the average lay person can't participate. Because part of their whole deal was they viewed themselves as the future saviors of the inner sphere. Well, to get there, the inner sphere has to collapse. And eventually they took on the idea of, well, we're, we're control the, we control the phone company, so we control data sharing, so let's just control the data. And they began an active campaign of taking out scientists who are trying to actually advance things. And, uh, yeah, that, that all kind of came crashing down with the Helm Memory Core. And then the clan invasion, where the clans eventually told them to screw off, that they wanted no part of them. And that's why then they engineered the Battle of Tukeyid. And uh, so Focht could take, them out, take down the clans. So, uh, you have things like that, and I, I think there are some other, uh, some other, like, new religions that have cropped up. Then, uh, like, I think Steiner, Davian, Steiner and Davian are both some brand of, of Christianity is the dominant religion, but most of the, most of the areas have multiple religions. And then Merrick, I think is probably a, a grab bag because of the way they're set up. And again, like I said, loud, they don't care. Uh, then the periphery powers, the only one, like I said, the only one I came across was the Magistracy having uh, at least some Zoroastrians. Then you have the clans who their whole way of life is almost like a religion when they venerate uh, Alexander and Nicholas Kr uh, Kerensky like near godlike figures. But some of the actual clans themselves are fairly religious, like clan, I believe it's Cloud Cobra, is uh, the one that was founded by a Star League Defense Force chaplain. He was the, the initial con. And I have to double check, but I believe he built a church there on Stronomecti. And so they have, you know, religious things going on with them. Um, some of the others, like the Goliath Scorpions, have, you know, ceremonies and whatnot. And, of course, they all have, well, I mean, they all have ceremonies, but I think the Goliath Scorpions are the one that drink the, uh, some of the, the poison to trigger the visions. And the Nova Cats uh, also like to go on the old vision quest every once in a while. So, and it's a nearly a religious experience. So, anyway, uh, that was just a, an interesting side topic that I want to talk about. Haven't done Battletech videos in a little bit. Uh, it's mainly because I just haven't been reading any, a lot of books lately, so I haven't gotten around to reading new novels to talk about. Uh, I do have my stuff from the Kickstarter. I just have been busy and haven't been able to unbox like any of it. I did an unboxing video on the same day that we filmed one of our uh, podcasts, and the sound just is trash. So I could do I could put the video up with just like I don't know Benny Hill music or something, and uh, it would be something. But like me talking would be pointless, and the camera is like far enough away because I had to be able to show everything that you won't actually be able to see anything in any kind of detail. So hopefully very soon I'll be getting to some unboxing videos of all that stuff. Uh, but otherwise, uh, just let me know. I, I know I've I know I've said I'm going to do some certain Battletech videos, and I'm working on them. Uh, as far as like talking about some of the factions, but do you guys want to hear stuff like this? Just like little tidbits of just random Battletech trivia and lore. Uh, if you do, let me know down in the comments. I mean, if it's real short, like if I can do it under three minutes, it's going to be a short. So because now they're three minutes long. Uh, and expect whenever I start doing more book reviews, I will do like a short blurb, which is going to direct back to the main video. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's all I wanted to, to talk about on here. So like I said, let me know in the comments, uh, if you want to know more stuff like this, are you interested in stuff like this, do you want to know more in depth on this particular topic? I can go and find out exactly like what the, what the religious makeup of some of the houses are. Um... But uh, otherwise, just in general, let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, 
like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Sharing and commenting are the things that really help us grow the channel, and we always appreciate that. But other than that, just remember, no guts, no galaxy.